Hey homeschoolers, I'm Melissa Webb, former full-time classroom teacher and homeschool mom turned full-time business CEO and encourager to homeschool families everywhere. I wanna give you sound, educational, practical tips and advice, at the same time making sure that you're enjoying the family journey that you are on. So if you are looking for a place to be encouraged and inspired, you have found the perfect podcast. Homeschooling is a work of heart, is truly the perfect place to start. So welcome, let's jump in. Hello friend, oh, what a week. By Tuesday night, I was proclaiming, wow, it's been quite a week. (laughs) We live in Southern California, also known as Fire Central, and we live in our high risk area around horse properties and acres and acres of brush and it's been so hot so you know what that means like perfect kindling and so there was a fire that started in orange county either on sunday or monday i'm not sure but it quickly moved over this mountain pass area and just came so quickly toward our area. We were put on mandatory evacuation orders. Actually, we were right on the border of the go and the get ready to go line, right? There's the red and there's the yellow. And we were in the red, but close to the yellow. And I don't know if you have ever had to evacuate your home, but it is not fun. You're there deciding, what do we take? It can be so stressful. So we did pack up for a few days. We had several wonderful friends reaching out to offer us a place to shelter, which is so sweet. We're just so grateful. Such an awesome community. Anyhow, the amazing 600 plus firefighters and the air responders, they all kept us safe. There were several structures that were damaged, a couple destroyed, not near where we live, but heartbreaking, of course, all the same. In fact, please pray for those people and those families who are dealing with multiple fires that are plaguing Southern California right now. Being prepared truly came in handy this week. My husband, I don't know if it was last year or maybe it was even the year before, he had made these emergency backpacks for us and for each of our boys, which is just such a smart thing to do and again I don't know where you live or if this is something that would be beneficial for you to put together if you haven't already but he filled these really sturdy backpacks with I mean you name it it was in there protein bars and waters battery packs an emergency plan a first aid kit there was a radio that would work like in all conditions, phone chargers, battery chargers, even like pen and notepad, some personal toiletries, just basic things that you could grab and go, you know, plus the other things that we know are really important to us. So we were ready and and packed. And I will just tell you that planning and preparing ahead of time when we feel level-headed is definitely the way to go. Because when we're left to just quickly do something and we don't feel prepared, that procrastination only creates more stress in our lives. So I figured this would be a good topic today. It's a question that I get often. How can I help my children stop procrastinating? So Let's talk about it. Are you a procrastinator yourself? Like, let's start there. A procrastinator is someone who makes a habit of putting things off. And we all are procrastinators to some degree from time to time. For example, I need to get some blood work done. And normally I would have booked it by now, but my schedule's just been really crazy for the beginning of the school year. And so I have put it off and I still need to do that. So I'm procrastinating in that case. But to be a procrastinator, a person who does it habitually, that's that key word. Is it a habit? Like all the time, consistently, are you doing it? Are your kids doing it? 
if you are a parent who feels like your child is consistently and habitually putting things off or let's just say dragging his feet, waiting until the last minute to get something done, I'm here to help you. Procrastination is actually a very common challenge. So you're not alone and there's no reason to think that something is wrong. There's just some learning that needs to happen and some practice that needs to be combined with that learning. And I know for a lot of us, we think of procrastination as mainly an academic issue, but I want to let you know it actually can have emotional consequences for your child as well. So it is worth spending some time considering. And you will know it's a problem if, yes, one, it's habitually happening, but you'll also know if it's creating anxiety or tension in your home or in your child's life, it's likely a problem. And I will tell you that as a teacher and as a mom, I have helped many a kiddo with this topic, this procrastination issue. And I can assure you that procrastination is not typically about laziness or even rebellion. Procrastination most often is stemming from something else. It could be uncertainty or confusion or even fear of failure. It could be that your child doesn't know where to start. She thinks she's supposed to know. She just doesn't really know. She doesn't want to be a pain or a bother. And so not knowing where to start on an assignment then begins to feel overwhelming. And what do we do when our brains feel overwhelmed? Most of us shut down. It's a normal reaction. She could also just be preoccupied. We don't know what's going on inside our kids' minds. Maybe her social life, there's something going on there. Maybe it's a video game that she's been trying to beat and win, and it's taking over her mind, or just her own thoughts. You know, maybe things in the world are concerning her, or maybe there's a fire in the area or around somebody she cares about. These preoccupied thoughts can also lead to procrastination. Again, nothing wrong, it's just you do want to have a conversation and get to the root of things. If you've noticed the habit of procrastination, again, if it's just once in a while, it's probably not a problem. It's normal. It's okay. But if it's happening over and over again, have a conversation. What do you think happened here, honey? Why do you think this got put off to the last minute, sweetheart? Like Just with care and concern and kindness, we just want to have some great conversations. Another thing that I see happen is that for a lot of students, it's a time management issue. They don't know how to manage their days as kids miscalculating how much time they think they need to finish something is often way off. And then the anxiety kicks in when the deadline is looming over them. And I think that's true for adults. Don't you think that's true for adults too? I do. So we're going to have a moment of honesty right now. And I have to ask you this. You need to be completely truthful with yourself. But here's my question. Is procrastination being modeled in your household? I know that can be a tough question because you have to own it. But think of your home life. Sometimes If life at home feels frantic, chaotic, disorganized, if your child sees you running around like a chicken with her head cut off, your child may see that as the norm. And a child might grow to think that scrambling last minute, that's how things just are. That's how things are supposed to be. So before we try to fix your child's procrastination, ask yourself, what are your kids seeing modeled at home? And the three-step plan that I'm going to go over for you to apply with your children, maybe first you need to do it with you. You get to decide that. But once you understand, yes, the habit of procrastination is happening, 
these are some of the reasons why we think it's happening. It's now time to take some action. And today I'm going to share a three-step plan that I recommend you try. Hopefully, it will help your child break out of the procrastination cycle. You may need to add things, take things out, tweak things, however makes the best sense to you. But I just want you to remember that procrastination is something that is natural and common. So it's going to take some instruction and some coaching and some some teaching first and then some practice, right? Think of Think of the fact that you are your child's teacher. You are. You're your child's most important teacher in life. You've been teaching your child since your baby was born and you were teaching how to stack things or how to pick things up with their little fingers and you were instructing this is blue and this is red and this is yellow and reading books. So you've been the first and most important teacher in their lives and with skills like this, you're still being that teacher. It's really important. It's an important part of your job, your role as a parent requires it. So let's go over this three-step plan. And like I said, maybe first you wanna think of it for yourself and then apply it to your life, see if you notice any changes, any improvements, and then share that with your child and practice it with them. But this is how I address it. Number one thing I do with kids who are struggling with procrastination is to build the awareness of time. Children often do not realize how long something actually takes. And it's true. Sometimes adults don't either. I have a friend who I always know she's going to be 10 minutes late to anything we plan, which is kind of comical because you'd think by now she knows how long it takes her to get ready, to actually get into the car and to drive and that where we live, there's often uh, traffic. (laughs) So a little buffer of time, maybe like buffer 15 minutes of extra time, Um, right? It's that awareness. And so a lot of times children don't realize how long something takes. So a, a, a kind of fun thing to do really to help them understand better is to start timing some of their daily tasks together. Kind of make it into a game. Ask your child, how long do you think it is going to take to clean your room? Or like, there's here's 10 math problems. How long do you think it's going to take you to do this? This is a great prediction practice as well. And then you say, okay, we're going to set a timer and see. So, and, and so really, I'd set a stopwatch. And then just let them do whatever the task is. And then they'll say done and you stop the stopwatch, and then compare the result of how long it took to what they estimated. Mm, This is an eye opener. Remind them that this is not about catching them off guard or being like, ha, you were wrong. (laughs) That's not what this is about. This is just a fun way, but a very excellent way of building time awareness. So let's say they predict... Oh, I think it's only going to take me five minutes, mom, to fold these clothes and I'm going to put them away. It won't take me more than five minutes, but it actually took them 15, right? That's a great learning moment. So now they have that in their brain. You could even keep track on a chart and start to say, you know, when you're doing this this chore or this task or this assignment, you should give yourself this much time. That's building time awareness. And like I said, once they see the actual time, that little light bulb in their head goes off and they're like, oh, okay, I need to give myself more time. It's it's a wonderful one and you'll be surprised at how eye-opening that one is. Once you've done that, the second part of this three-step plan is to now plan and structure project time. You need to do this for them in the beginning. Eventually, they'll do it. But again, your role as a parent, is to be a teacher. And so that next step is going to be with you starting to plan out their learning. Not all children can focus for long periods. You probably know your child's focus time better than anyone. So you're going to help your child break down the big projects into smaller tasks and then schedule work periods based on 
their attention span. So let's say that you have a child who can really only focus for about 10 minutes, but 10 math problems takes 20 minutes. Well, then you're gonna say, we're gonna set a timer for 10 minutes and the goal is to get five of those problems done. Then you're gonna go take a break. Go run around outside, go get a snack, whatever. Come back, set the timer for another 10 minutes, they'll finish those other five problems. I will tell you that two of our three boys were challenged with ADD and ADHD. In fact, uh, we took one of our sons out to um, Dr. Amen in Orange County area. We had the full brain scan done, and of the seven strands of the ADHD, he had four or five. So this was an issue. He could not focus for longer periods of time. He was easily distracted. And this method kept him engaged. At the same time, it helped him not feel overwhelmed. And remember, feeling overwhelmed can sometimes be a lead cause to procrastinating. It feels overwhelming. I don't want to do it. So pacing it in shorter chunks of time and me showing him how to do that, me setting the timer, again, me being the teacher or the coach to be like, you can do this. You can totally do this. Let's break it out, out like this and then get his feedback. And if he could say, I think I could work longer this time. Great. Let's try it a little bit longer. So help your child plan and structure their project times. Super important. The third step in this three-step plan may seem like it's not super important, but it's very important. And that is to celebrate their success. Positive reinforcement is a psychological tool for a reason. <laughs> it works and it can be super powerful. So when your child completes a task that wasn't put off, you know, by procrastination, whether that was finishing the math problems or just in 10 minutes getting five of them done, you want to celebrate it. Now, I'm not talking like a huge celebration with balloons and confetti and that kind of thing. It does not need to be extravagant. It could just be words of affirmation. Oh my goodness, you did it. How awesome. High five. I'm proud of you. Hey, you get an extra five minutes of free time. This is awesome. Maybe while they were getting the work done, you went out and made their favorite snack. All right, you popped some popcorn and you sprinkled that little pickle seasoning <laughs> that I love so much over it, right? Or maybe maybe if you have younger children, you are doing some kind of a sticker chart or, or stamps or I don't know. You need to decide what your kids are motivated and re positively reinforced with and and one of the things you could actually do since you know your kids best is sit down with them and just ask like what are some of your favorite rewards what do you love and if they're like i just want to play my video game longer great then write that down get a list because it won't always be the same reward every time sometimes all we have time for is words of affirmation a hug Right? Like, oh, I'm just so proud of you. Just squeeze them. Okay. So here's the thing that we know, and that is our brains release those feel good chemicals when we experience positive reinforcements. With enough of that, what ends up happening is most of us want to chase that feeling again. And this is true for our kids. So over time, with enough positive reinforcement, children begin to associate getting the work done with reward and are then more motivated to keep going and stop procrastinating. It's awesome. All right. One last thing I want to say, and this is important. It was a lesson I learned years ago and I still apply to my life today. Do not fall into the procrastination trap with your kids. Do you know what I'm talking about? Your kids procrastinate, then they're anxious, and there's this intense thing, and they're freaking out. Now you're freaking out because they forgot this. 
it's not pretty. <laughs> I remember a season when one of our boys habitually forgot to bring his darn shin pads to soccer practice. I don't know what was going on. It's just driving me crazy. And at first, we'd get there and he'd be like, Mom, I forgot my shin guards. Can you go get them? So I'd race home and I'd be like, oh my goodness, you forgot your shin guards? And I'd fall into the procrastination trap like, ah, it's an emergency. So then we'd drive home and, and I'd say, hey, just remember next week you want to maybe put them by the door or get them in the car the morning of. Um, I, I would give all kinds of suggestions. I, I would remind him the day of. He'd still procrastinate. He'd forget. And then somebody taught me this powerful sentence that I want to share with you. And what it does is it allows you, like it allowed me, to create a boundary around the issue and stop enabling him in his terrible procrastination habit. So there came a time, of course, that he forgot them. And I just said, sweetheart, your procrastination is actually not my emergency. That's powerful, isn't it? Your procrastination is not my emergency. And I just said to him, I hope you remember next time and I hope your shins don't hurt too much. Now, I will tell you that was very hard at first because as a mom, I just want to take care of my kids. But it's not hard for me anymore. And I will tell you, I use this line with my students who will procrastinate. All of a sudden, they've put it off, they've put it off, and they can't find a link to something that they need. And it's supposed to be turned in by 4 o'clock, and they're really freaked out. And I just say, take a deep breath. You have procrastinated, and it's okay. It's all going to work out. But your procrastination is not my emergency. So I'm not going to rush to get this done. I'll get this done when I can. And by no means am I angry. I am not upset. Notice the calmness. This isn't like a punishment. It's just a realization. Oh, bummer, you forgot. But it's not my emergency. It's okay. It's all going to be okay. But at the same time, it is important for them to realize that. Just because somebody else put something off, it doesn't mean it should also stress you out. That's not helping. It's really not. And you are enabling. So I hope you can be patient. I hope you can be consistent with this. I hope you apply these strategies. Let's help move our kids from procrastination to productivity this year. Remember, time the things they do to build that awareness. Plan for them and with them at first just to show them how to work in shorter spurts so it's less overwhelming. And celebrate. Celebrate with positive reinforcements of some kind. And by the way, if you do have any other awesome ideas that have worked for you or your kids in the area of procrastination, please share them with me. I'll be sure to share them with everyone as well. You can find me on Facebook, on Instagram. You can contact me through my website at writeonweb.com. Let's make this our best semester ever. Right on. Well, thanks so much for tuning in and listening this week. Hey, if this was something that you found valuable, don't forget you want to subscribe or follow so that every time a new episode is dropped, you'll be the first to know. And hey, before you go, if you are looking to get some of this academic writing under your belt and outsourced so that it's one less thing freeing you up to enjoy more time with your family, hey, you're going to want to head over to Write on Web. Dot com to see what kinds of resources and materials I have available for you. I will look forward to seeing you there and I will look forward to seeing you here in our next episode. Right on!